This video is going to be mainly about me owning the bike for about a month. I, I guess you could say a, a one month review. I didn't change anything on the bike until a month. I just did the shocks. I just did the throttle. So I have been running this bike completely stock. I just want you guys to know that in this review that it was completely stocked for a whole month before uh, I did anything to it. There's some interesting stuff I want to tell you that I probably never even really mentioned in a lot of my other videos. Start off with, uh, I don't know, something basic. The tires. I have the dirt tires on here. Now, when you first get your bike, a lot of people have said in the groups, if you really follow along and listen to what people say or you read, read around stuff online, I guess there's a huge issue with the wheels being balanced. Um, some rims have actually like been slightly warped, but for the most part what it is is when they mount the tire onto the rim, they don't beat it correctly and it's kind of lopsided so you get a lot of uh, you get a lot of shake in there. And um, I noticed that too. That was actually like one of the first things I noticed when I got the bike. I kind of felt like it was little wonky if you're getting a little bit of a uh, bounciness to your ride on your onyx you just have to uh, deflate the tire and uh, make sure when you air it up for the second time that it's all completely uh like around actually let's go this way i've been with this way before like when you turn a certain way you can feel i don't know you can just feel the tire like like it's lopsided or it kind of wants to wash out on you. I feel like it's a, a cheap tire. Not a big deal though. It's got me around. I haven't fell and I haven't felt uh, scared or anything like that. Another thing you're going to notice on this bike is the front rotor. Uh, my brake pad is, it's always making noise. It's like constantly uh, rubbing against the brake rotor. I always hear it every time I'm turning. I don't know if it's just something up with my bike. It's definitely something that I uh, I always hear. You're gonna hear a lot of squeaking on this bike. I get tons and tons of uh, rattle out of this bike. The suspension is uh, helping us a little bit, but it's not not the best if you're thinking about getting this bike to go in the dirt if you really want something that handles the dirt a lot better do not go for this bike i'm telling you now i i would definitely get like a sur on or something so what's it been like riding this bike if maybe you don't have one you kind of want to know from somebody that's owned one for a month I would say it's a fun bike. I don't think it's recommended for anybody young because it actually is really powerful for a bike, especially someone that's kind of inexperienced. Um, but I will say this bike is a little bit safer if you put it in like normal mode because the throttle it comes with is a little thumb throttle. Um, I would say the Super 73 would be right behind it in uh, safety. I would say the Surron would be a little bit more sketchy because it's a full twist throttle. And uh, if you don't know how to use a full twist throttle, let me turn my power down, uh, you might, you know, lean too far back and you might wreck the bike. So this is going to be my personal opinion about this bike. I would say if you're in a bigger city where there's not too many roads that are like under, say, 40 miles an hour, I would highly suggest maybe looking at a different bike. I feel like this is the perfect bike for say like San Francisco or um, New York. You know like tighter compact uh, areas. I would not really suggest this for a city like mine. I mean I can use it. You know there's nothing wrong with it. But they advertise 60 miles an hour and you're not going to get 60 miles an hour out of this bike. So if you really want to ride it in traffic, once your battery depletes like 50%, when everything around me is about 45, 50 and everyone goes over the speed limit already, you're not keeping up with traffic. 
so unless you ride when there's really no one out and about you'll be safe and okay but if you're riding during rush hour traffic i don't take this one anywhere I, i'll take my suron because my suron's able to get 60 miles an hour after doing a mod to it so if you really got this bike to do 60 miles an hour even if you weighed you know like 120 pounds that's it's not happening Yeah, so do not get this bike if you really want to go off-roading in it. The tires are pretty cheap. They slip around side to side. Like, it's just fishtailing on me right now. I'm just holding on to try to keep the bike from uh, doing anything crazy. And uh, it just, with the stock suspension, I'm even on some better suspension. And it's still kind of rough for me. And the stock suspension was much, much worse. So it's not made to be off-road i mean you can but don't expect to be like hey i'm gonna go and hit the dirt and go balls out to the wall and it, it's just not it's not the business another thing you might want to think about too is uh when you have to change the rear tire out it's not very easy and what do you mean by not very easy um so it's a hub motor so what happens is there's no quick disconnect on the hub motor in the rear so basically to remove the tire you have to be careful and not pull the wires out but you have to leave the wires attached to the hub on the rim when you switch out the rear tire so just a heads up on that i haven't had to do mine yet and i really pray i don't have to do it anytime soon but trust me um it does not look fun like on the Suron, it's it's uh, chain driven, and all you have to do is basically take you know the rear wheel off, you take the chain off, and you can take the complete wheel off. You don't have any wires attached to it like you would on this one. I'm kind of cruising because I was just kind of curious to see uh, what our range would kind of be if I took it a little bit easier and then charging it on the 2.5 amp charger. I will say if you do get the stock 23 amp battery um you're gonna have probably range anxiety because you really can't go too far and don't ever ever rely on this uh, battery bar the battery bar that's right here do not rely on that it is so inaccurate um from what i noticed it basically goes off your riding so if i was if i was to leave my house uh riding a different way let's say i was in sports mode you know full throttle like all the way for you know the last like six miles i bet you i'd probably be on two bars right now and that's not really that's not really because the battery is draining so fast it's because it kind of it kind of gives you an idea of your riding style so it's let, basically letting you know okay like you got two bars to go down to try to explain it a little bit better is in a car you know how you have your uh, your average miles per gallon i feel like that's how this bar works so if I kept a constant 50 miles an hour, it's gonna start draining a lot faster. But then as soon as you start riding slower, your battery bars actually go back up. Basically indicating to me that your average miles is increasing because now you're going slower, if that makes sense. But please do not go off the battery bar. It is horrible. Go off the actual voltage, learn your voltage. Download the image to your phone or something and when you're out and about just you know just check your phone and see like oh okay it says i'm at like 72 volts check to see what that is with the graph and then that'll give you a better example of where you're at since i've had mine for about a month um i would basically i would basically tell you do a domino throttle that should be one of the first things you do on this bike is a domino throttle the stock throttle really uh really sucks i've never went down this way so let's check it out can this bike ever hit 60 miles an hour the answer is no how comfortable is the ride stock it's pretty bad if you're on a straight street it's so nice and smooth and like comfortable it's quiet it's actually like really relaxing well i wanted to turn right here super relaxing but as soon as you hit a bump in the road like it's horrible so how far can you get on a battery 
riding legit in traffic doing the speed limit with people let's say you're averaging about 35 40 miles per hour i would say safely you'll get 20 miles you could probably get up to about 25 but that's gonna be like your cutoff mark where you're gonna be not in sports mode anymore because you're gonna start getting voltage sag and the power is probably gonna start cutting in and out so after 20 miles i would keep it pretty conservative eco mode or normal mode but if you're just riding around pretty uh normal especially like i said new york san francisco places like that it's gonna be um so much better the bike does not come with mirrors i would highly suggest putting at least one mirror on your bike you can get some off Amazon that go into the bar ends. You just have to cut the grips. And it's about like 13 bucks or something. It's like nothing bad. Would I buy another Onyx? No. Would I recommend people the Onyx? Yes and no. Their, their bikes are great. But I feel like they're lacking the customer service. Which, you know every company in general is going to take a loss on something you know like some orders aren't going to be perfect there's going to be issues with certain bikes you know um they just need to take care of people and uh they didn't they didn't take care of me so i i don't think i can really recommend them to be reliable for getting warranty stuff fixed unless it's something simple where they can just send you a seat or send you a headlight or a pedal or you know a tire that was bad from fat like you know from being made or something just a defect but you're still gonna have to do the work regardless <laughs> not really <laughs> like it is but isn't yeah oh it jams yeah it, it's fun but it's not worth like five grand it was five grand it's expensive <laughs> see just right there i can't i can't recommend someone pay five grand for this bike with all the issues that it has i i just i don't know i just really can't dude it's so quiet now that there's like nothing over here there's no traffic it's just dead silent all you hear is the tires so trippy oh and then the squeaks that this bike uh, normally puts out and eh, you'll get used to that though it's pretty hot i was debating if i wanted to jam home but i still got range anxiety guys like once i get a bigger battery in this bike i will be golden i really don't want to be stuck behind this truck because is on fire so if we can please move that'd be great let's see if someone's in the bike lane today most likely yep there's always someone there's always that always that one person oh there's pink i'm not gonna do it i just i don't know for some reason i like i just have to leave it in sports mode i just like i just have to I don't know, it's just something about uh, when me and John Angel were talking the other day. I just, I can regulate the power, but I want all the power when I need it. I don't want to have to, tw you know, switch a button, you know, like, I just want to have the power when I need it. Oh, man, it's really bumpy. It's so quiet, man. You get in a neighborhood with no one out, no cars, you hear nothing. Not too bad, 45 miles per hour, but the battery is going to go pretty quick. This is definitely a street I have to, I mean, I could, at least, I could do 40 if I really wanted to, but I don't want people to kind of like be mad at me.
All right, so what happened at the end of the video is that my battery and my GoPro died. This footage that you just saw, the video that I edited down the probably 15 minutes or so, it was actually, I want to say 58 minutes total, and I just, and I cut out all the BS stuff. I just wanted to get down to the point on the video about the Onyx. Overall, I think the Onyx is a great bike. The people who put it together, it was ahead of its time, I believe two years ago when they had their first uh, launch on these bikes. It, it's awesome. I mean, it's a 72 volt system. I mean, the bike is fast, guys. Like, it takes off like no other business. I do wish that Onyx would change their website and update it because these bikes do not hit 60 miles an hour. I don't care if you weigh 100 pounds and you're going downhill, you're most likely still not going to hit 60 miles an hour. I think the max that I've seen on this bike is 52 and I was going down an overpass and my battery was at least 95% charged to the top. When your battery starts to drain and your mile per hour goes down farther and farther. I feel like the problem with these bikes aren't the bikes themselves. Like yes, mine did come messed up and yes, I did have a lot of issues with Onyx, the company itself, but if they were just taking care of their customers, maybe had a few extra people calling people or emailing people back, sending parts out when something's wrong with it or fixing people's bike. I feel like it'd be so much better of a company. I personally can't recommend someone to spend that type of money on this bike. My bike was five grand shipped to my door. It's just, it's a lot of money. I, I really feel like there's some better bikes out there, but if you're looking for something different, something new, something exciting. And you can't go wrong with picking up an Onyx. I mean, you really can't. I mean, it's a it's a great bike. I just feel like their quality control is kind of hit and miss. You might be someone that gets a perfect working bike and it's great, go out and ride it, have a good time. And you might be someone that gets a bike that's already messed up as soon as you get it off the truck. Or you might get a bike where you have an issue with the brake lever within the first, you know, couple, couple miles or so I've seen a lot of people say they've had issues like that it's on the higher end of bikes so if you have the money then why not spend it you know but if you're contemplating because you don't have a lot of money to spend this might not be the bike for you but I really don't want to suggest what type of bike because it also depends on your riding style and what you want to use the bike for but that's pretty much the video guys I hope you guys enjoyed it like and subscribe to the videos I have so much more content to put out with this bike and for the Saran coming, so uh, I'll see you guys.